What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're going to go over Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR. Year to date, company is up 196% and then over the course of one year, 134%. Palantir did report earnings last week on Thursday and beat on top and bottom line. And also gave some updated guidance for Q4 and raised its fiscal year 23 outlook. And with all that combined, it shot the stock price up about 20%. Also in the press release, they we're talking pretty heavily about the AIP platform that Palantir has come out with that they're only allowing certain businesses and government agencies to use. And it sounds like eventually they will roll it out and make it available to everybody. But that seems to be the big talk right now of how efficient that is making companies. So we'll have to keep a close eye on how that is going to perform in the future. So over here at the financials, we have revenue, gross profit, and net income. All three trending higher and net income is starting to squeak into the positive territory. Gross margins sitting at about 80%, net margins at 6.9%. Revenue gross profit year over year change, starting to slow down a little bit, but still maintaining decent growth at, you know, well, 11 to 13%, 13% gross profit, 11% revenue growth. Return on invested capital, still a little negative, sitting at negative 2.43. P.E. ratio today sitting at 270 P.E. Earnings yield slightly negative, basically zero. Cash to debt. This company's balance sheet is probably picture perfect, and we'll go over that here momentarily. Net income to free cash flow. Company has more free cash flow than net income. They do depreciate and have stock-based compensation still. Free cash flow, $475 million. So they've been positive free cash flow for about three years straight now. Capital expenditures, just hanging out at about $13, $15 million. So pretty good. Share count dilution, again, they are handing out stock-based compensation still. And they are still issuing out a little bit of stock, only just a uh, just minor amount. But they do hand out quite a bit of stock-based compensation at $367 million of stock-based compensation. So that adds into the share count dilution and dilutes you as a shareholder. So over here on the balance sheet for Palantir, we have cash and cash equivalents up here and marketable securities. Gives us a total amount of $3.2 billion in cash on the balance sheet. It is good. You can see last year they had only $35 billion or million dollars in uh, marketable securities. And now they've transferred over a lot of their cash balance over into marketable securities to earn them a, a little bit more uh interest income which we'll see a little bit of that as we go through the net income statement so we've got 3.2 billion dollars in cash we come down here basically if you just ignore all this everything else and just say okay we got 921 million dollars in total debt you've got a boatload more cash to cover all of your debt tomorrow but we can still deduct out i personally like to deduct out deferred revs which we've got two sections of here which takes off about $223 million, which then in total leaves them with about $700 million in total debt. So, I mean, there's there's nothing to worry about there on, uh, on the balance sheet whatsoever. So down here on the revenues, or on the three months end side, we've got a big increase year over year. We went from $478 million in three months to $558 million year over year in the three month span. So we increased about $80 million. Our cost of revenue, dead flat, Overall operating expenses down $22 million, which then you just you just do those real quick numbers. So they added $80 million to revenues and it costed them less money to earn $80 million because they got rid of $22 million of SGNA. The only thing I did note is that I wouldn't mind seeing sales and marketing tick back up or maintain at about 180. It's slightly down, not a big deal, but I would not be mad if they did increase their sales and marketing to try and uh, advertise more for their new AIP product that they have out there. That seems to be a pretty big deal right now within the company. But also you can see interest income right here. We can see we added $37 million in interest income in three months. So they're making a little extra money on interest as well. So this is the nine month end on the cash flow statement. And in the last nine months, we did $120 million. We've got $343 million of stock-based compensation. Looks like they're trimming off some stock-based compensation, so that's good. So that'll help uh, decrease the dilution going on. Then we have other changes within cash flows that flow in and out of the business. From here down is basically where you're going to have changes to the assets and liabilities. You now have $411 of cash from operations, $411 million 
minus off CapEx, which is 10.2, which leaves you with about $401 million in free cash flow for the last nine months. And we can see down here, they purchased, they, they sold 2.6 billion in marketable securities, but then bought $4.8 billion in total marketable securities. So then that'll allow them to make more interest income. So we come over here to the comps. We got four other companies to compare it to. We scroll down here on, on Palantir's. We got a few red flags. We got a price target much higher. It's currently trading much higher than what the price target is based on analysts. We got share change year over year is up 12%. More operating cash flow, we already talked about that. We already know return on equity and capital are lower than where we would probably like them to be. But we do have market cap to revenue over here. We can see where market cap to revenue is uh, across the board on all these companies. Palantir is definitely up there on the market cap, but definitely does not have the, the best revenue. And then we have revenue, gross profit, and net income comparison. Palantir, not quite the best or the most bringing in the most money. Growth rate over here, all all the company is looking at 20 plus percent growth rate, you know, for the most part, minus their revenue on these other two companies here. But they're looking for some pretty solid growth across the board. Gross margin sitting at 80%. That's like the market average right there. We have operating margin sitting at only 1.7% all over the place in the industry there profit margin sitting at seven percent same thing all over the place free cash flow all the companies are positive free cash flow return on invested capital again just kind of all over the place not really much to go off of to understand roughly where we should be looking or headed pe currently negative 944 if you're looking at it from a current pe today otherwise you're positive pe forward looking but all the pe's almost all of them except for autodesk are negative and earnings yield, again, these, these charts here aren't really giving us much insight as to what to expect out of Palantir. The only good chart here is probably gr gross margins and everything else here is just kind of very messy and not doesn't give us any real good directions. So over here on the Peter Lynch valuation, we are using forward-looking numbers, uh, EPS and PE for the next 12 months. That gives us a Peter Lynch fair value of $4.59. Multiples comparison, we really only have Autodesk to compare to, so we will eliminate the other three that we valued against. That gives us a price per share today of $12.13. Manual PE, we have market cap minus cash add in debt divided by cash from operations. It's going to take this company 78 years to earn where its market cap is. So uh, that's telling us it's pretty overvalued, right? Price to book. 15 year or five year average is 15 currently sitting at 12.5 peg ratio being that it's a growth company is telling us we are very richly valued today grams valuation giving us an intrinsic value of eight dollars and 80 cents per share discounted cash flow history of free cash flow growth rate 45 and a half percent analysts are expecting 25 percent i match analyst expectations of 25 percent and looking back, reading through more of what I saw on this company, I think I'm going to bump it up a little bit and say 35% potentially on free cash flow growth rate. That gives them a DCF price per share of $6.82. Rule 72, we have three sources of an EPS growth rate for an average of 22.21. That goes into 72, 3.2 times. And then that goes into 10 years, three times. So then what we can do is double our EPS three times, one, two, three. And that leaves us with almost... Uh, basically a two for future EPS. And that then gives us a fair value today of $22.21. So over here at the summary for Palantir, currently trading just shy of $19. Our fair market value on the company is about $11 per share, 30% margin safety, $7.64 with analyst price target of $13.25. Keep in mind when we go through these numbers that just because fair market value today is $11 per share doesn't mean that Palantir won't be worth more in the future or maybe not, maybe it'll be worth less. But based on Palantir, if you believe in the story and you're willing to pay for the story, pay more for the story, just know that when you're paying more for the story, you're paying an additional potentially $8 per share, depending on how you value your companies. This is based on my valuation methods. And that tells me, okay, based on all these different proven calculators, this is the number I get. That's the number I believe in and trust. Now, I'm not going to go out and pay $19 today for Palantir. Is it going to be on my watch list? Absolutely. Watching to pick it up for $11 per share. You know, I want it to prove itself. I don't want to overpay for the company. Will it be worth more in the future? It could be. But for now, uh, I want to pay what it's worth today or less. And for I'm okay paying a fair price 
for a great company. So if that means if I have the opportunity to pick up Palantir at $11 per share, I'll buy Palantir for $11 per share. So over here on the stock chart for Palantir, uh, we were in a pretty substantial downtrend there for a while, but since have broken out and have now made higher highs and higher lows. Potentially, we might see higher highs. We'll have to wait and see. We could also draw a trend line in here, possibly something like that, depending on how these candles form, or we might just trend sideways. I'd be okay if it trends sideways a little bit and I can pick up some shares down here at $11 per share. That'd be great. I'd love to see this stock pull back about $7, $8, and then I would be a buyer down here on this trend line. But based on the hype on the company and how it trades, it's probably going to go higher. We'll probably see it in the mid 20s eventually, probably sooner rather than later based on how it is trading and how earnings reacted at a grew 20% in one day. So I'm going to have to assume that this thing is probably going to pop through resistance here and then see itself back up to $25, $26 per share in the future. Now, just because I see it as that, I still am not going to want to go out and buy it. I might swing trade it, but I know that when I swing trade stuff, I'm buying companies based on technicals, not on fundamentals. And when I buy, so when I buy a company, like I might swing trade this. If this thing breaks out above $20 per share, I'll probably buy it. When I buy it, I'm looking for something to come up to like $25 to $30 per share potentially. You know, I'll probably trim off some or move my stop up to break even. And I'll be looking to sell in this range because I know that this company is not valued where I valued it at. So I'll swing trade it, see if I can't make some money on it because there is momentum behind it. So that's what uh, that's kind of what how I trade. You know, if if there's a potential for buying this company at a cheap discounted price, I'm gonna buy it and hold it. But if I also know if I'm gonna see that this company is gonna go without me, I know that there's probably gonna be momentum behind it. There's gonna be a lot of buyers, especially if this thing can break and crack through $20 per share, then there's a good chance this thing continues higher. And then wait and see if we once the next earnings report comes out, maybe this thing will then be worth a little bit more and then a little bit more. I mean, that's just kind of how it works. It's just kind of like buying a house. You don't buy, go out and buy a house and say, and it's currently worth $150,000. Well, you're not going to go out and pay $250,000 for a house that's only worth $150,000. You're not going to do it, right? So, I mean, it's kind of the same thing in the stock market, except in real estate, you can't just, you, you're not going to want to go out and do that. But in the stock market, you can, you can go tomorrow and you can go buy uh, overpriced shares everywhere in within the stock market. And you can also buy undervalued shares within the stock market. That's the beauty of the stock market but you also want to value this company you want to know what it is worth not just what you think it's worth but have some data and some numbers to back up your theory so that way you know okay based on the numbers I went through this is what I think this company is worth and that is what you do in real estate except you have comps to go off of and those comps tell you roughly what the property you're looking at buying is worth but that is it for Palantir if you found value in this video drop a like subscribe and comment and we'll be back later with another stock analysis video